Well, hello everyone. Uh, this is a special presentation uh, for me giving uh, this on the C-Star S50 Smart Telescope because this month marks the uh, one year anniversary of owning uh, and using this uh, wonderful smart telescope. And so I wanted to kind of go over some things with it, like uh, what does it mean for me to have been able to use this smart telescope. I'll show some of my best imaging that I think I've done uh, for this year, as well as cover some other areas that I think uh, might be of interest to um, the smart telescope audience. All right, so um, I've owned the C-Star uh, for one year since uh, mid-November or 23. And it's been a blast. It's proven to be a rugged little smart telescope. Uh, and keep in mind, this is a $500 uh, rig. Um, I've imaged the sun and the moon at each about 20 times or more. Um, and I've uh, even uh, used it as a go-to to, to uh, 66 Messier objects in one night. And over this past year, I have... Um, uh, easily imaged and processed over 80 targets. And this evening, I just want to reiterate, I'm going to show my best work, not all of them. Uh, that's just, that would just take too long. But I think you'll enjoy um, the targets that I've selected here. So um, let's take a look at what uh, can be accomplished. And, and I will say there are, there's a lot better results out there on um, the C Star uh, Facebook pages. So I did these three all in February of 24 the Crab Nebula, Rosette, and um, the Running Man Nebula. Here we have M46. So you can see that it's a small uh, planetary nebula in this uh, open star cluster. Um, that was imaged in February of 24. I imaged the uh, M27 in the center, which uh, in, in September of 24, and also in February, um, the Yin Yang cluster uh, was imaged. Um, in February of 24, I imaged uh, M45 and the double cluster. And in June, I imaged uh, M35. So in May of 24, I imaged uh, NGC uh, 2903, M81 and 82, and the LEO triplet. Um, I did some reprocessing of M81 and 82 to bring out a little bit more color and detail. And also M51 uh, was uh, imaged and processed in July of 24. So in early May of 2024, a friend of mine and I set out to a um, wildlife refuge uh, just about 20 miles south of Mule Shoe, Texas. There's a picnic area right next to where they have the refuge. It sits on a hill. And we decided to go there so we could capture Omega Centauri as it sits low and above the horizon in the early morning hours. As, it's, as this target is really a Southern Hemisphere target, um, we had to pick in time and uh, uh, that we could easily see all of the cluster. Um, a friend of mine that lives in uh, Roswell and is a member of the Roswell Club, Joe Muse, uh, initially told me about the Omega Centauri uh, cluster. Uh, with his imaging and his comments on, on their page. And uh, I am very grateful that he did because this is such a wonderful object uh, to uh, capture. 
so in May, I did uh, M3, 4, and 5 globular clusters. And um, in April, I did the Needle Galaxy and the Well and Pup and the Crowbar Galaxy, as well as Thor's Helmet in March of this year. So each of these three objects you see here, the Sculpture, Pac-Man Nebula, and Crab Nebula were imaged in June of 2024. M101, um, I started collecting data for it in May, and I finally processed uh, my first try at it in June. And uh, after collecting more data in July, I, I reprocessed it to give us what we have here. And I've kind of turned it on its side, if you will, uh, to kind of give you a, a different view of the Pinwell Galaxy. Um, in July, I imaged uh, the Eagle Nebula. And in September, I imaged the Lagoon Nebula. Um, in October, I uh, imaged and processed um, the Crescent and Helix Nebulas. Um, I could probably stand to capture more data on the Helix, but uh, I just love these two targets. And I think the Crescent Nebula is my um, best object processed to date. Here we have um, Orion's Nebula that I uh, collected data in early October when uh, some, uh, some of us went out to uh, Nethook Park, which is about 10 miles north of Clovis, New Mexico. We were trying to get the first glimpses of the, the comet, uh, Shishashwan, um, Atlas. And I got to tell you, um, the sky was just beautiful. Um, and, and, and this image reflects just how easy it was to, uh, this is just 15 or 20 minutes worth of data. And um, it, it's just remarkable what the Sea Star, a $500 mount, can actually give you when the conditions are right, that is. <laughs> so I also did some lunar imaging. Um, this particular one I dedicated to my grandbaby. Um, Elise, she's uh, two years and she really loves the moon and the sun. This image was taken in June. And I just love how the detail really came through um, for to capture all this detail. It's one of my favorite uh, of my lunar uh, captures. And here we have the full moon in Aug October uh, 16th at Nethook Park. The, Considering we how much wind we had that evening, this I think this came out pretty well. And we have um, the last segment of imaging is uh, solar imaging with the sea star. Here we did I did this on August 25th. Uh, every major sunspot that you see here is bigger than the Earth. Here we have another view of the sun in, um, I believe uh, this was done in October 8th. And then the last one was done uh, in November. And I just love how the uh, sunspot detail and the surface detail came through in this image. Um, considering um, I had a lot of um, wind when I took this, but I used PIP to get every frame centered up, and um, it, it gave me uh, the results I was looking for. So now that we've looked at my best imaging, I'm going to share my thoughts and, and about uh, what's new in the smart te telescope arena and uh, some of my own expectations with the S50 and thoughts about the new uh, mosaic feature in the S50. So here are the topics I'm kind of going to go over. Um, so we have the mosaic imaging feature now with the, the S50 Smart Telescope, a wonderful addition to um, 
the C Star S50 because uh, the S50 natively has a very narrow view. And what CWO did in giving us this mosaic feature is we can expand those borders of what it's capable of and give us a wider view imaging. Um, it's it's a blessing, um, but now we just have to figure out how to process that imaging, and that's that's kind of where I'm at. I'm having some issues trying to figure out a good workflow that works for me. Um, also from ZWO, they've announced uh, the S30 Smart Telescope, a smaller version of um, the S50, but it has two lenses. I kind of think uh, it's a they're going to offer some features similar to the Dwarf 3. And so I'm looking forward to um, the results coming out uh, when this S30 is released into the public. Dwarf Labs, um, as you know, they, 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 they've had the Dwarf 2 and the Dwarf 3 is a more recent offering from Dwarf Labs and their software just keeps getting better. Um, the major updates that they come out with really um, enable uh, the Dwarf 2 and 3 to take uh, rather spectacular uh, deep space imaging. I'm really impressed with the results I'm seeing. But this new uh, feature I just I'm hearing about is that it allows a schedule. You can schedule what you want to image within the software that comes uh, on your smart device. That's really well done. Um, new smart telescopes. If you watch the um, Space Koala. Uh, YouTube channel, and I highly recommend you do. She does a really great job on that. Uh, she featured a new smart telescope uh, I thought was very interesting. It's called the EduSnap, E-D-U-S-N-A-P, uh, smart telescope, which not only does imaging, but it also features an eyepiece. And it's supposed to be geared for young, um, you, you know, the younger people. I uh, guess getting an interest in uh, astronomy. I think this, from the software that was featured uh, in this video, I think it's very promising. So, my this is my final segment in this presentation, and it's my thoughts on the S50 Mosaic. And I really love the feature. I'm, it, it's really long overdue. But I think it's a beautiful addition to the features that are that come with the software on your smart device. However, given the fact that it took ZWO um, almost uh, practically a year to get this feature available to us, uh, and given all the other wonderful products that we we enjoy from ZWO, like its AM5N mount and the AM3 mount all its wonderful cameras, and really um, the smart telescopes now. Um, I, I just wonder how difficult it is for ZWO to upgrade and keep up with the demands that its customers uh, would like to see in their software. I mean, um, the, it was in beta testing for quite a while. And I, I just think that, um, while the mosaic feature is probably the single most awaited feature for the for the S50, I I think it could have done a little bit better. I think it as far as letting you know where it is in the mosaic imaging and letting you know that it's finished with the mosaic. Um, not to mention maybe uh, where you can save where you are. Um, and ask if you want to continue maybe on another night uh, to continue collecting data uh, for that mosaic. I think um, at least some of those you know suggestions I just made would really benefit uh, the average user just starting out with mosaic imaging. And, and that includes me. I'm just starting out with the mosaic imaging. Um, but uh, it's really cool to see um, M31, for example, 
uh, all the frames taking place on your smart device and filling up the screen. It is really cool. I just, I just think that it'd be nice for it to tell you that it's finished or maybe what, say how many frames um, it's got to go through before it's finished. Some way of keeping up with it. So you don't, you're not guessing at the end. Well, that's my thoughts on the Mosaic feature. And um, that's it for this presentation overall. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope uh, that if you're on the fence about getting the C Star, that maybe this will this video will convince you to go ahead and purchase that. Um, because if you love astronomy and astrophotography, um, there is a lot of great things about this C Star. Um, that I really, really love and, and appreciate. Uh, I think um, over time, the mosaic feature will, it be, will improve and be even greater benefit to its users. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.